Welcome to Bob Larson Live. What a show we have for you tonight. By the way, for those of you who have been watching us on TikTok for the last 30 minutes and migrated on over, welcome to you for coming on over here to be part of Bob Larson Live tonight. Tonight, can you get a demon from listening to dark music? What do I mean by dark music? You're about to find out about that. And like and share. Let's start driving those numbers up. Let's build that audience tonight, uh, especially with a lot of young people watching out there as we talk about death metal music, dark metal, some very heavy stuff out there. We're going to talk about the devil. We're going to see an exorcism tonight, by God's grace. So... Like and share. Let everybody you know. Go on. Click on it now. Like and share so more people can participate tonight. And join the members only. The channel that now is almost a year old. In a month, we're going to be celebrating the last month of the first year of the members only channel. And next month, you are going to have 72 Videos available at the commander level. Talk about binge watching, man. You can really binge watch. And also, please subscribe. Some very exciting things coming up. Well, on Friday, I, I, I can't read that. I can't read that. It's got to be darker. Uh, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, on Friday, be watching. We're going to have another edition of Taking Questions on Ask the Exorcist. That's going to be 9 Pacific, noon Eastern Time. And then Monday, 10 o'clock Pacific, 1 Eastern, another live vlog. Did you enjoy the live video blog that we did this last week on the subject of Afghanistan and what's going on over there? We'll be watching next week. God created music. Satan was once heaven's greatest musician. Lucifer fell, and since then, he's no longer the world's greatest musician. He's the world's most evil musician. He's out to make music evil. Now, we know music can uplift the soul. We see that every Sunday, many of you in church, when you worship the Lord through music. But when music goes bad, it darkens the soul. And tonight, you're going to hear the testimony of a young man who contacted our ministry he said, I think I have a demon. He witnessed blood rituals on stage at death metal concerts. He was in a band. He became possessed. You don't want that to happen to you. So be watching tonight. Like and share. And let everybody you know about Bob Larson Live. Our next live seminar. And by the way, we're going to stream it live from Dallas, Texas. It's going to be on October the 15th. Adrian, I see you're already out there, man. You are on the job. You're my man, Adrian. Thank you. And hello to all my friends in Dallas, Texas, who are part of our Do What Jesus Did ministry team there, Adrian's group of folks. Wonderful. We appreciate you people so much, and we're so happy to have you to be part of what we're doing to see people set free. By the way, you know, we have ministry teams of trained deliverance ministers. Now, these people have been vetted. We just don't have people who say they do deliverance or would like to do deliverance or maybe are interested in deliverance and we, we send you to them. No, no, no. We actually have a separate division of the ministry. We have a, a husband and wife team, formerly uh, very successful in the corporate world. They have retired and they now are pouring their time and energy into developing our prayer teams all over the world. And it's a highly organized group of people, highly trained. The majority of them have been through my International School of Exorcism, and many of them have been through my Advanced Academy Deliverance. And they're out there, hands-on, right there in scores of cities all over the world, ministering healing and deliverance. And they're here, there to help you. And so we have references. There, there, you know, there are many ways we can help you. We can help you through virtual encounters that I do all day long, six, seven days a week, ministering, casting out demons all day. And I do that. And you can go face to face with me. We have people flying to us from all over the world to be directly with me in person. That's always the best. You know, it's, it's, it's better just to be feet away from where those demons are and staring them down. So if you can get here to our ministry headquarters in Phoenix, Arizona, by all means do it. But other than that, we can help you virtually. But we also have ministry associates and some who are highly trained and credentialed in specific areas. 
of ministry. And that information is on our website. So whether you meet with me personally, you meet with a ministry associate, or you get involved in ministry with one of our teams in selected major cities around the world, we have ways to help you. Nobody, nobody has to remain demonized. Nobody has to remain tormented. You can be free, and we're there to help you. And you'll learn more about that in the Dallas area if you come. Now, be sure to send me your chats and your comments. And don't forget, get one of those special T-shirts below. And go to our website, check out the resources, and find out all the books that we've had. I want to remind the TikTok members watching me now on YouTube, you got a question? Let me know. First of all, I want to thank you for the Super Chat, Sarah, $5. Thank you. And Kristen, so great to hear from you. And thank you for your recent help with the ministry live and in person. Thank you for the gift of $19.99. Uh, Sins of the Devil, there is a handle for you. Why is yoga bad? Okay, first of all, go to our book, Larson's Book of World Religions. Got a copy over here. I mean, this is a, a big book. 575 pages, a study of world religions, cults, and alternative spirituality. I've got a chapter there on yoga, Hinduism and Eastern meditation. Read it. Now, that's probably your best place. You can go, however, into our archives in this, this channel. So check, go scroll back at some of the shows. We did an incredible show on yoga uh, a couple of months ago, and then, then further back in that, we did uh, a show with a lady who was part of the so-called Holy Yoga Movement who came out of that and has an incredible testimony. So there are special shows that we've already done on this topic. But let me just give you the basics. Yoga means union with God. What God? Well, not the God of Scripture, not the God of the Bible. The Hindu God, because this is where it originated, you know, four or 5,000 years ago. Any Hindu yogi will tell you that yoga is a pathway to spiritual enlightenment. Its purpose is to cause you to be at one with Brahma, to be absorbed into the absolute universal consciousness, and to bypass the evils of karma and reincarnation by going directly to God and be absorbed to God through yoga. And there's, there's bhakti yoga, there's kundalini yoga, there's hatha yoga, there's all these different kinds of yoga. It's all bad. Don't pay any attention to these people in the church who say they can sacralize it, they can sanctify it, they can make it good. They can't. They're, I deal with people all the time who got demon-possessed in churches doing yoga. Don't get me started on that, all right? Uh, oh, T. Pierce, thank you for the uh, super chat of four ninety nine. dollars Moses Prey says, I played with the Ouija board earlier. Is that bad? Yes, that's bad. You could have gotten a demon. All you have to do is play with the Ouija board once to get a demon. I've cast so many, probably thousands of cases through the years of people who got their start into demonic possession with a Ouija board. Okay? Billy says, I've always wondered that since Satan comes as an angel of light, but yet I've heard people talk about digging claws of demons and so on. Do demons morph into ugly creatures with claws? Oh, absolutely. Look, they are ugly. Demons are more hideous than you can even possibly imagine. Just, just think of the worst thing you've ever seen in any horror movie. The, the bloodiest, the most grotesque. Demons are worse than that. They start out as angels. They start out as goddesses and and. and and beings of light and so on. But they're hideous. And when you risk their mask, rip their mask off, you find out what that's all about. Bob, I was wondering your views on watching the UFC. Nobody has ever asked me that. Can you get a demon from watching it? Yes. Yes. I need to do a show on that. Okay? It is demonic. Absolutely. But I don't have time to go into it. Terrell, thank you for the super chat gift of ten dollars. Silver Hunter says, "Hey Bob, a question. I've been told that in ancient Canaan, when a child was sacrificed to Moloch, the musicians would play louder and louder, drown out the screams, so the parents wouldn't hear. What do you say? Yes. And there's an excellent example of what we're talking about tonight: the use of music to worship the devil, the worship of music, the use of music to bring the presence of evil spirits. This just did not happen." With, with Slayer or Motorhead or Iron Maiden. This goes way back. 
in antiquity. And he's absolutely right. This is documented uh, in archaeology. So what they did, Moloch was this, this huge idol that was hollow on the inside, and underneath it they would build a fire so that it was superheated. It would, it would, they, they said it glowed red from the intense heat. And it, it, this idol Moloch had his hands outstretched, and the people would come to sacrifice their babies, lay their babies into the hands, the searing hands of this idol, and the baby would be slowly incinerated. Obviously, the child is screaming in terror and torment, and the musicians played louder and louder and louder and louder to drown out the sounds of the screaming baby. Sound like a concert you may have been to? Dark metal, death metal, heavy metal, black metal, satanic metal, thrash metal, music with satanic lyrics, throbbing beat, performed with ear-numbing intensity. It's been around for 30, almost 40 years. You go way back to the Detroit bands, which is where they got the term, by the way, heavy metal, because they said the music sounded like the stamping machine stamping out the metal cars on the assembly lines in Detroit. I bet you many of you never knew where the term heavy metal came from. That's where it came from, because a lot of the bands originated out of Detroit in the uh, Ann Arbor area. And we're going back now, actually, to the late 70s. Bands like Metallica, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Pantera, Megadeth, Morbid Angel. The leader of Morbid Angel used to call me when I was doing my radio show years ago and would debate with me all the time. And deicide of Glenn Benton. That guy hounded me for years. Every time he got a new album, he would call me on my radio show and want to talk about it and debate me. For an evil guy. And of course, uh, the, the satanic band that maybe was the most popular of all time, a group that I toured with internationally as a journalist for Spin Magazine, Slayer. Now, that's another whole story we could talk about sometime, but yes, I toured with Slayer as a journalist writing and sending reports back to Spin Magazine. Very interesting story. And yes, they did satanic rituals. And no, they weren't Satanists, but that's another story. But the worst bands were in places like Norway. So Norway didn't start this stuff, but boy, did they take it to extremes. We had a lot of people who watch us in Norway, so I want all my Norway people to listen up right now. Bands like Dark Throne, Cadaver, Molested, Gorelord, and the band whose members I have debated on international TV, Mayhem. Particularly the leader... Necro butcher. I mean, the name says it all. Butchering a corpse after you have sex with it. How tor how horrible can we get? Now, th these guys in Norway, they're dead serious. They burned down churches and in one particular case have murdered other band members. So, grinding guitar riffs from bands, that's not the only kind of dark music. You know, if I quoted the lyrics of almost many any mainstream rap artist performing today from Little Nas X to Ice T, <laughs> or YouTube would shut me down. I mean, if I quoted those lyrics, and yet you could watch them perform on YouTube, but if I quoted their lyrics straight out right now, they probably would shut me down because of obscenities, and some of you would actually want to throw up. And then there's satanic techno music. Now, that's there's another whole thing out there. Uh, one of the most uh, prominent Satanists over the last, 30 plus years, a guy named Boyd Rice. I know Boyd very personally. He and I have spent time together. We've been debated and talked. Hi, Boyd, if you happen to be listening to me right now. Uh, he is into this satanic techno music. He's, in fact, he's one of the originals. And then there's satanic rave music and satanic trance music. All dark music. So here's the question. We're going to get to this question. What is it? Is it the lyrics, the lifestyle, the sound, the staging? Is it art? At its worst, is it theatrical? Is it extremist expression? Or is it spiritual rebellion? And can it open the soul to a demon? Can you become possessed by dark music? I say yes. But, you know, it depends on the circumstances. It depends on the motive of the artist, the intention of the hearer, the environment of the concert. But I can tell you this. As an exorcist, I've cast demons out of people who became possessed. 
but the wrong kind of music. In fact, I did an exorcism this last week, just this last week in our offices here, by a guy who was full of demons. His entire family had a big family, had five brothers who were in a heavy metal band. And they, they played, you know, our cover band, they played all this stuff, the groups I've been talking about. And when he was a little kid, his mother is a single parent, let these five brothers in the band babysit him and it would set him in diapers in front of the speaker. He got possessed from that because of what they were singing about and what it did to the brain of this child. Crazy. All right, the chat line's open for your opinions and your questions. And in a moment, I'm going to be joined by this man who believes he got demons in part from dark music. Thanks to my TikTok folks who have joined us. Lila, thank you so much for the $15 super, super chat gift. By the way, we're getting back on the road again, and we're going to be doing some uh, remote broadcasts of uh, exorcisms as they happen. And we need some special equipment to be able to do that. Now, my friends, just listen to me for a moment before we jump into this thing with my guest and, and the exorcism. It's going to cost us about $1,500. Now, that's peanuts. Come on, you know, that wouldn't even pay the air conditioning bill for one day in one room in a mega church. But for us, it's really important because it's only been a year ago in the midst of COVID that we have, you know, rebooted this ministry in a very different kind of way out of necessity, but now God has expanded it to, to millions and millions of people through social media and the internet. And, and so we've had to start from scratch getting all types of equipment. You have no idea. If you were sitting where I'm sitting now looking out, you would just see thousands of dollars of equipment that slowly we've had to acquire over time through the faithful gifts and the financial support of our friends. So right now we've got this piece of equipment. I need three people out there who would give a gift of $500 to this ministry, help us out so we can get this equipment very quickly. Would you ask the Lord if he would have you to do that? Maybe you could be a hero for the hurting with a gift of $1,000 and give two $500 gifts. Maybe somebody could just give, give the whole $1,500. Maybe you could be a warrior for the wounded with that gift of $500. Whatever the case may be, help us right now. Send it in the Super Chat so that I know that it's coming. You ready for my guest? A couple of chats real quick. April says, Hi, Bob. I have many dreams of me doing deliverance and family members and random people and then getting healed. Does that mean I'm called to deliverance ministry? I don't know. You know, the mind is a strange thing. Dreams are things uh, that can, can be very odd in terms of how the subconscious mind works. But, uh, you know, it's entirely possible. The Lord is speaking to you and beginning to show you. I don't want to say one way or another. But seek the face of the Lord. Say, okay, God, if this is your way of drawing this to my attention, let me know now. Long live Eli. Bob, a question. Is there more than one God, and which one do you believe in? Scripture says there was one God. One God. There are not many pathways to God. They do not all go to the same place. Just being sincere isn't enough. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I, referring to himself, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to God but by me. In John eleven twenty five, 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Thank you so much for Amazon for the gift of four ninety nine. A question, can you make a video exposing the Catholic Church and its pagan rituals? No. No, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do that. I have many reasons, and maybe we'll get into that one of these days. You know, there, there's just... There's a lot of misconceptions about the Catholic Church. I'm not a defender of Catholicism or Protestantism. I'm just here to speak about Jesus to my Catholic friends, to my Protestant friends, to all those who are out there who believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God risen from the dead and you put your trust in him. Now, does the Catholic Church in certain parts of the world, because it's not a monolithic organization, have some variants of Catholicism that do practice paganism? Absolutely. Listen, I can tell you some weird stuff about some Pentecostal preachers from Africa who come over here bringing witchcraft with them and mixing it with Christianity and have a variant of Christian faith with witchcraft are doing as much damage. Maybe we should quit pointing fingers at other groups like the Catholic Church that are very big. And I'm not pro or anti-Catholic. I'm just pro-Jesus. I hope you all understand that. Matt, 
Members of the members only for six months. Do you encounter any demons during your rock days? <laughs> well, I probably did, but I wasn't a Christian at the time, so actually I was you know, I ran into it that you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and the whole scene. But, but, I, I wouldn't have known it was demon. I didn't know anything about demons until I got saved. Uh, Billy's back again. So Christian metal is okay as long as the motives were good and genuine. Well, you, you, there are Christian metal bands out there. And actually, uh, one time I played on stage. I, I did pick the guitar back up and played on stage with one of the most famous Christian metal bands, and we really rocked, and I had a great time. But their motives were in a very good place. But that is an interesting question. Um, Gold Superman, how are you, Bob? I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for the question. We're going to be taking more chats in a moment. I want to introduce you to a young man by the name of Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Can you hear me? I've lost the sound of Johnny. He can't hear I'm me. Here. Okay, I got I him can, now. Now we you. got each other. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. You've got a story. You've been listening to yeah. all of this. Uh, you played in a band, I think, for about five years, and there's so much to talk to you about tonight, but let's talk about the band, yeah. okay? Uh, so which of these was it? Heavy metal, dark metal, black metal, death metal, thrasher metal? What was it? All of them. Uh, it, <laughs> it got really bad. Well, there was a progression. Um, I don't know if you want to go into the progression, but the main one that caused the serious issues, um, I was in two black metal bands. Okay. And you, yeah. and you played in a band? Yeah, yeah I would write uh, the music on guitar, and then I would play drums for the band. So I was like doing two parts. I was like, I was writing and creating the music, and then I was playing drums um, <clears throat> for performing and for studio work and stuff. Okay, all right. Uh, you mentioned in the material that you sent us, Blood Rituals. Yeah. Can, can we talk um, about that for a moment? What, yeah. did, you, what, what did you see? on stage or back behind the scenes no it was on stage it was none of this is hidden if you're if you're part of that world then none of it's hidden it's it's right there you kind of you have to agree to it um you know when you join up there nobody can be in a black metal band and, and think that it's not satanic they they can't do it they can't but uh you know i was like 15 and uh one of my friends um asked me if i wanted to join um a black metal band you know, that was, I just came out of a few death metal bands and I joined up with them. And then all of a sudden, and you know, the guys, they weren't wearing, you know, cannibal corpse t-shirts anymore. They were wearing, uh, you know, dark throne shirts and full on pentagrams or like big upside down crosses. They were, they were hardcore, you know, and, uh, it threw me off. And, but I was still like, well, whatever, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm here to play music, not to get into your ideologies and whatnot. But then uh, it started to get weird real quick because the singer in the band, um, you know, he was basically, he was uh, a male witch. So before we would play, then like if we would practice, we had this room that was completely sealed off, no windows, no nothing, kind of like a Masonic lodge or something, you know, and uh, pure darkness. And you played by candlelight, which was new to me, but he wouldn't enter into the room until he had done rituals in the other room. Um, and he wouldn't tell us what those rituals were, but um, he would do that in there. And a lot of times he would come in bleeding, um, you know, come in bleeding. And uh, then he, we would play he, came, he came in bleeding, had been cutting himself. Yeah. Yeah. He would, he would cut himself up. So, um, you know, like on the arms or some other places. Yeah. Uh, chest, stomach things like that. Like sometimes he just come in with his shirt off and he was all cut up, you know? Um, and so that's where it started. And, um, I was still pretty young. So I was, I was, uh, naive to it. I was like, well, if he wants to do it, then that's his problem. You know, that's his thing. And I didn't realize, uh, how bad it was, but then, uh, it, it progressed and we actually got pretty popular for what we were doing. You know, we, we did, um, I don't really want to name the names of the bands that I was in because I don't want to give them, I understand it. Yeah. Uh, any credibility, but anyways, we did some, some demos that actually ended up being pretty popular, you know, here and overseas that, uh, you know, it started to grow. And then, so you, and, and, and 
I, I want to ask you a question. Hold on just a minute. I want to remind my TikTok friends who may still be watching me out there right now uh, to see what's going on, to participate in it, to send me a chat, or just to hear the whole full scope of what's happening. You need to get on over there, migrate on, migrate on over to YouTube right now or there in TikTok. You just click on uh, the bio and it will show you how to get over there real, real quickly. Or just go to YouTube and go to the Bob Larson Exorcism channel, live streaming, and that's where we're talking right now. So come on over there and join us. So uh, you're caught up in this scene. You're seeing this craziness, this, but you're writing the songs. Yeah. Are, are you are are you putting the lyrics in there? Are are you no no? So somebody else is adding the satanic lyrics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's how it works. Did, did that? I did just, that? Did my that, job was to make them sound as dark as possible. By so how music. how how did you feel about that? You know, was there a conflict? You weren't a Christian at the time, so but um, what conflict of your conscience, or, or were you? That's that's weird because I was raised Christian and I had some stuff happen to where I just I walked away from it at that time and I was just I was very angry at God. So I'll be honest, I didn't have a conscience about it at the time. You know, I was with friends. I thought they were weird. Um, my goal was to write new, more extreme music than I had written before, even in the death metal stuff. You know, and, and so I just erased my own conscience. I seared my conscience and I if I had the spirit with me, I definitely quenched it. Uh, to get the job done, you know. So, but, so mm -hmm. I was talking to you just before we came on. Uh huh. You really got into this. Can uh, can we take a look at your tattoos? Uh. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, so what do we got there? Well, it might be hard to see. Um, can you see it clear? Like yeah, that? yeah, we can see it. Yeah. So uh, I was into a band called Vader. And they're very demonic. They're a death metal band, and I ended up getting that on me. And it's, it. I didn't even pay attention to the fact that it had snakes all over it and snakes on either side of it. And at the time, I identified as that guy. Okay, so those the, are snakes. Uh, but what, tell us about uh, move to your uh, right just a little bit so we can see more of your arm. No, the other way, so we can see more of the arm. So, so yeah, what is with this? Well, there's a skull and cross, uh, a skull. Yeah, right? then, okay, the guy. The guy, well, him, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a yeah. punker skeleton, and and who's that? You got me. He's some Nordic Viking. So, so is that like Odin yeah, or was... somebody like that, or Baltor or somebody like that? He, who knows? I was you don't so know. Into okay, the, so the whole show it. Yeah. Show us the other one a moment ago. You you were talking to me about oh. this before we came on the air. This guy's got oh. a bag over his head, committing suicide, and he's choking himself uh oh yeah there you go so basically uh, i identified with him because he had a bag over his head he clearly put it over his own head and he's holding his own ropes holding that to his head and i just felt like i had screwed my life up so bad that i identified with him like i was the one causing all my problems but i never really realized that it has the eye where his heart is and that it has the snakes all around it and there's a snake encompassing him on either side and uh that's actually off of um, a Vader album, and yeah, not good. Okay, I've so actually been dreading what, this thing lately. What, what's on the other arm? Uh, well, actually, on the other one, I was showing you. I don't, I don't approve of tattoos anymore. But that's uh, me and Jesus, and that's uh, Cornelius right there. And so you got G G Jesus I, yeah. on your right arm and the yeah, devil on your on left, left arm. Yeah, vice versa. And then I had the the old man um let's see so you're you're trying to <laughs> the old man that, yeah i was actually trying to make up for bad things and then i, I had uh <laughs> make up for the bad with, tattoos with more tattoos yeah and i had a barcode put here with numbers 32 23 where your sin will find you out you know i was very convicted about everything i was doing okay. and then i really I, I found out later that 666 is actually hidden in all barcodes and i was like oh okay I can't so, win. so anyway I you, you you eventually <laughs> you found the lord now let, let there's so much yeah. we need to get into so let's let's roll the clock back here because i want to make sure we get into as much of this as possible okay. you were born dead literally physically dead yeah your mother um, your mother tried to abort you yep and you know when i was like 10 then uh 
they used to tell me the story that, oh, you were dead in the womb and the Lord delivered you and, uh, you know, you were going to be a great this and that and the other and tried to make it a romantic story. But then when I turned about 20, then uh, I was in the car with them and then um, she admitted that she had attempted an abortion on me. Um, she didn't say why or whatever. And then uh, later, you know, way later down the line, then um, the Lord actually gave it to me. He, he helped click those two stories together because it's at 10, it's at 20, and then at 39, you know, there's a lot of gap between these things. And I realized that the story was that she was in a hospital bed with me dead, confirmed dead, and they were going to extract me. No abortion needed. They were just going to extract me, no heartbeat. And then there was a lady in there with her. And she was crying, I guess. And then the lady asks, um, you know, what's wrong? Why are you crying? She says, my baby's dead. And then the lady says, the baby's not dead. You're dead. And so that was the story that I was given, right? And then the next day, then I guess I had a heartbeat and I live, you know? So that's great. I'm here with you. But <laughs> So you had but to, yeah. yeah and, and then you also, just to complete this picture of your life, uh, you started doing drugs at 13. Um, yeah. You migrated to alcohol, um, the tattoos, the death metal band, et cetera. Uh, wow. And then you started looking into your background, and, and this is kind of interesting. Your dad fought in World War II, mm -hmm. and he was in the Navy and served with Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. And uh, you think maybe there's something demonic that was picked up there, right? I have a hunch. Um, I can tell you about it whenever. Okay. I, I, I think that's a pretty good hunch. What's the, what's the essence of it? Uh, the essence of it, and I didn't start looking into my past until, you know, like 20 years later. It's almost been 20 years since I um, even thought about any of this stuff. But it's been coming up recently because I'm in a, a, a church group that does, um, you know, spiritual inventory. And when I started doing that, I refused at first because I knew I had a lot of baggage. But I just... I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm in this thing and I have to do it, so I'm just going to do it. And then everything just started unraveling and it got really crazy and I felt nuts. But um, praise the Lord, I have Jesus, you know. You had an the interesting only thing experience. That kept me from being crazy. Yeah, you had, you had an interesting experience at communion recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, the whole Papua New Guinea thing, I'll be quick about it. Then I was praying because... Um, you know, about six months ago, everything kept going in patterns, like just things kept going bad, the same thing over and over. Every time we try and make progress, and I'd make progress, and it would just go back and it'd be the same thing. And I mentioned it. And I said, you know, this feels demonic. And then I was told, No, that's it's not demonic. Um, it's you. And I was like, Okay, well, I believe that. And then I started thinking, Okay, well, then I must be crazy if it's me. And so I started looking into psychological stuff. And then that wasn't panning out. Um, a lot of stuff fit, but what doesn't when you're Googling, right? And so um, then later, once this whole thing came out with the inventory of like my spirit and my, my relationship with the Lord and everything, then it comes out and I was praying hard. And I asked God, what is this? You know, like, what is it? It has to be something demonic. I cannot, I can't put my finger on it. It keeps happening. I'm 39. It can't go on like this. And the Lord showed me that I had been um, treating uh, my earthly father as an idol because so much had gone bad in my life that I was giving him like a pedestal. And um, he actually showed me that I needed to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And he had this painting that I wanted since I was a kid of the coast of Papua New Guinea at night. And it was these ragged, like kind of crazy looking ships that had these uh, canvas tops and they had fires in them. And there's these little guys on there. And it just, it was an ominous picture. And the reason I liked it when I was young was that it was dark. It was very creepy looking, you know, and I ended up hanging it over the bed. You know, it's been over the bed for like eight years uh, since he died. And the Lord actually told me that thing needs to get burned. And a lot of the stuff that you kept needs to go like the books that he gave you a lot of stuff. Right. And I'm like, OK, well, I'm going to do that. You know, hmm. I I want to I want to walk with you and you're telling me exactly what I need to do. This makes sense. So I did it. And he actually had uh, kind of shown me that there, I won't speak for the Lord. I think that's a very dangerous thing to do. But my perception of what he gave, and I didn't know much about any of this at the time, uh, was that Leviathan and Dagon were present. Hmm. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. 
and they're both sea spirits. Exactly. And um, he was in retired Navy, World War II, saw a lot of death, you know, Papua New Guinea, uh, can, can, witchcraft, all can, that. can we jump, before I run out of time here in this yeah, segment, yeah. Can, can we jump to great grandpa, interesting guy. He was a Mason, but he was also in the KKK. Yeah, that's kind of unclear because um, my dad never talked about him. Um, never, ever. There was something going on in the family. Like, they never talked about him. I didn't even know my grandpa's name. But a picture was found where he was, it was like the either late 1800s, early 1900s, and he was sitting in a library, um, very wealthy, nice suit, big library, and the book that he chose to sit with was The Leopard Spots. Now, do you know anything about that book? I looked into it a little bit. And yeah, I that, like that's that's a, a book that was essentially to counteract Uncle Tom's Cabin. It, it was a book of white supremacy, and mm -hmm. uh, to 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 try to counteract the effects of what happened after the Civil War. And I mean, basically, it's a racist book, highly racist book. Yeah. So yep. you got that in your background. Have you ever renounced that? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I did a whole lot of renouncing and curse breaking today, like all day, and uh, that was one of them. <laughs> I'll do it again. But um, also, when he had dementia, he was about 86, and I sat with him. He never talked about his dad or his uh, grandpa or anything like that, but he was in a, a trance, like dementia state, and for some reason, he just started talking about uh, Klansmen, and he called them the good old boys, and he called them the good guys, and then he went back off into his trance again, and I was like, whoa. That's crazy. And then he died a little while later. So it was like, you know, you're never going to get that story. So all the history of all the Masonic stuff and KKK and whatnot, of course, I renounce it. Yeah. Praise God that I was never involved with that stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know anything about it other than that it exists. OK, there is there is a lot here. Uh, yeah. There's a lot here. And uh, I, I want to make sure that we have an adequate time to to minister to you. Uh, are you ready for that? Yeah, as ready as I'm ever going to be, right? <laughs> Nobody's been, ever really ready for an exorcism. I've been praying about it. When we talked before, I I walked in front of a mirror after we talked just talking, and my face was like bright red, like tingling. I don't know if that's some kind of manifestation, but I was like, wow, that doesn't happen at all. Well, I've not had the time, an opportunity to minister to you directly, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've not had the chance to try to cast any demons out of you this is my first time yeah i'm looking forward to this I, th I think i think all of us are very deeply touched by you and uh we're ready to go to war and i want to remind my viewers out there that like and share because we're about to have a a great moment of spiritual confrontation with the forces of darkness. Let's get everybody watching that. Like and share it right now. My TikTok friends, you need to jump on over to YouTube right now. Uh, so uh, check there in my bio, click on the link, or go over to our exorcism channel. And uh, if you would, please make sure that you become part of this. All right? I take this anointing oil. I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I submit you to Christ. So you mentioned earlier that you had uh, downloaded our curse-breaking book and that you'd been reading it and going through it today. So I want to take you through a couple of really basic things, what I call targeted curse-breaking, which is going to target the specifics of the things that we talked about. All right? Yes. Okay. I want you to repeat after me. All of this evil that we've discussed. All of this evil that we've discussed. Is under the blood of Jesus Christ. It's under the blood of Jesus Christ. That's not who I am now. It's not who I am now. And who I'm going to be by God's grace. And who I'm going to be by God's grace. I cut myself off from all of this. I cut myself off from all of this. And every connection of my soul. And every connection of my soul. To the death metal band. To the death metal band. The people that I performed with. The people that I performed with. On a spiritual level. 
on the spiritual level. And all of my ancestors. And all of my ancestors. Well, you told me earlier what some of your ancestry was, so we're going to walk through this. See, I renounce all the bloodline evil. I renounce all the bloodline evil. Of my mother and father. Of my mother and father. The witchcraft of the Irish. Witchcraft of the Irish. Whatever my dad picked up in New Guinea. Whatever my dad picked up in New Guinea. The Aztec of the Mexicans of my mother. The Aztec of the Mexicans of my mother. The tattoos. We forgot Cherokee. And the Cherokee. Ah. The tattoos. The Celtic and the Nordic. Celtic and the Nordic. The demons and the snakes. The demons and the snakes. The drugs and the alcohol. Drugs and the alcohol. And the spirit of death and murder. The spirit of death and murder. That tried to kill me before I had life. Tried to kill me before I had life. And great grandpa. Great grandpa. I break the curse of the KKK. Break the curse of the KKK. And all of their hate. And all of their hate. And murder. And murder. I break the curse of Freemasonry. I break the curse of Freemasonry. And all of its evil. And all of its evil. Every evil spirit. Every evil spirit. That entered through these things. That entered through these things. Has to leave me. Has to leave me. I will answer God's call for the purpose of my I, life. I will answer God's call for the purpose of my life. And Satan's not going to stop me. And Satan's not going to stop me. All of these evil spirits. All of these evil spirits. They were passed on to me at birth. They were passed on to me at birth. And the ones I opened the door to. And the ones I opened the door to. Are subject to Jesus Christ. Subject to Jesus Christ. The sword of the spirit, by Hebrews 4.12, I divide soul and spirit. I separate the spirit of this man that belongs to Christ from all the parts of his soul where you are, Satan. You told me earlier he was molested as a child, incested in fact, so I know incest and Jezebel there. Now don't nod your head, don't agree, don't engage now. This is where you need to step away. You've already made your commitment by being here tonight. The Lord knows you want to be free. Keep your eyes open and look at me. I know death and murder are there. The spirits of the lodge. Ah, we got the witchcraft of the druids and, of course, the Celtic and the Nordic gods. Hi, where do we start here, Lucifer? <laughs> where do we start, Satan? There's so much here. He's already said he had a sense Leviathan was there. So we got Leviathan, we got Lucifer, we got murder, we got Jezebel, we got the Nordic gods. I strike you with the judgment of Christ. Now you look at me, you spirits. You're not going to have this, man. Go away, Johnny. Just let that evil look at me and face me. The evil that was there in that dark room with the candles and the music. That evil. The evil that was there with Great Grandpa and the Lodge and the KKK. The evil that maybe we don't even know yet. I resist you by the blood of Christ. Whom has God judged at this moment tonight? Get up and face me. A prayer family. We've got the world's largest live prayer and deliverance family. I need you right now to join in with us. Use those emojis like I use my cross as a symbol of your faith to express it against the enemy with intensity. Members only. So who is it? 
death, murder, hate, Leviathan, Jezebel. <laughs> Who's that? <sighs> Answer me. The wolf's name was Asmodeus. Asmodeus. Lost. He was a wolf. The wolf. Fenrir? Uh, Is it Fenrir the wolf? He belonged to the singer. Belonged to the singer? So you and came... he had another dog, wolf. So the wolf Loki. spirits came from the singer in the band to this man through the blood. They loved wolves. Well, go away, Johnny. Who is the wolf, really? Who is the wolf? What spirit is the wolf? Answer me. Who is the wolf? What does he represent? <laughs> Answer me, we command you by Christ. His name is Ismodius, that's all I know. All right, stay up, but Johnny, let them speak for themselves. All right, Ismodius. One of the princes of hell. One of the spirits of the lodge. And the KKK. Get up, Asmodeus. Get up, Asmodeus, and look at me. Get up fully to attention. Come on, wolf, I want to see your ferocity. Come on. You don't want to let go of this man, do you? He knows too much, doesn't he? <laughs> Is that Asmodeus <laughs> laughing? Is it? Yes or no? Uh, Who's laughing? Is it Asmodeus? Asmodeus. Do you have a right to be there? After all this man has prayed and all that he's done and after the curses we've broken. Oh, don't try to think about it, Asmodeus. Just uh, answer with the truth. Do you have a right to be there? No. Okay. And who's with you? Answer me. Oh, come on. I've already named the ones that I know that are obvious. Who is with you? He, he thinks... Don't worry about it, Johnny. Uh, Johnny, they're trying to just, just to mess with your head right now. Uh, Don't do it. A lot it. of names. A lot okay. of names. Okay. Well, okay. Just go away, Johnny. Let Asmodeus uh, tell me what are the names. I don't need to know the whole list. I need to know the big ones. We're just after the big ones tonight. Who? Leviathan. And? Well, he's got the snakes on his arms. That's a given. And Jezebel, he was molested. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who else? Who else? Answer me. Uh, By the Baphomet. authority of Christ. What? Baphomet. That makes perfect sense. I think Baphomet's the king of death metal music. <laughs> what do you think? He's in there. Oh, he's in there. Uh. Who are the ones important? Answer me. Anybody Jezebel. else really important? Jezebel. Well, let's just go with that. And don't forget death and murder. Uh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, now who's the most powerful here? Uh, hmm. Who knows? Well, the devil knows. 
And I demand to know who is the most powerful. Is it Asmodeus? Is it Leviathan? Is it Jezebel? Is it death? Is it murder? Who is it? Murder is strong. No doubt. Yeah. Who's the most powerful? I know who likes to talk. Jezebel. Hey. Why don't you look at me, Jezebel? <laughs> ah. Jezebel? Who is the most powerful? Is it Asmodeus? No. Well, who is the most powerful? Answer me. I command you by Christ. He just played on his lust. Okay. But that's not the answer. Who is the most powerful? I mean, no Asmodeus is the demon of lust. You tell me, Jezebel, you like to talk. Murder. Was murder going to speak for himself or are you going to speak for him? <laughs> Which will it be? I don't know, Bob. Well, no, you tell me, Jezebel. Are you going to speak for murder, or will he speak for himself? I think we need to let murder speak for himself. By the sword of the Spirit, I separate all of these evil spirits and set apart murder. Get up, murder. Spirit of murder, get up and face me. Oh, come on, murder. All that blood... All that worship of the devil through the music. But I want to know where the root of murder is. Is it with great grandpa and the clan, or is it somewhere else? Where's the root of the murder? Answer me. Or is it in the blood sacrifice? Tell me, murder, I command you by Christ. Answer me, murder. Where is the root of murder? The deepest root. Where? Where's the deepest curse of the murder? Answer me. Come on, for Fred Valley, put the pressure on. What? Aztecs. Through the mother. Grandmother. Grandmother. A lot of blood in those Aztecs, wasn't there? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, yeah. The pre the, in fact, the priests who wrote about it at the time said the streets of Tenochtitlan and some of the ancient Aztec cities literally flowed with blood. So many were killed. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That obsidian knife ripping open the heart. Ah. Yeah, you loved that moment, didn't you? I had him draw it in the fifth grade. You had what? I had him draw it in the fifth grade. Really? So that yeah. means Quetzalcoatl is there as well. Uh, but murder is the most powerful. So murder, you speak for these kingdoms. Ooh. Say, I the spirit of murder. I command you by the cross of Christ. I command you by the blood that flowed down that cross from his side and his brow. I command you by the empty tomb. Say, I murder. Mm. Say it, I murder. Mm. Get your head down to look at me. Get your eyes open and say, I, the spirit of murder. The people of God command you. Say, I, the spirit of murder. Say it. I, the spirit of murder. Lift the curse of the ancient Aztecs. Why would I do that? Because I commend you through Jesus Christ. And I'm in authority through Jesus, along with all the others who pray with me. We're in charge through Christ. So I lift the curse of the ancient Aztecs. He didn't have to draw the picture. He chose to. 
and now he chooses to follow Christ. So yeah. lift the curse of the ancient Aztecs. Say it. Say it, I command you. You said, I murder, say we. I lift the curse of the ancient Aztecs. Say it. I strike you with the judgment mm -hmm. of Christ. By the sword of the Spirit, I strike you with judgment. I strike you again and again. I ask the Lord to send mighty angels to come and to strike you again and again and again with punishment and torment until you yield. Say, I lift the curse of the ancient Aztecs. He's sweating all over his Bible. <laughs> What's spreading over his Bible? He's sweating all over his Bible. Oh, he's Bible. sweating. That's not a response to my demand. <sighs> you said, I murder. Now say, I lift the curse of the ancient Aztec. Say it. I command you by Christ. Say it. Lift the curse. Of the ancient Aztecs. The ancient Aztecs. And all their blood sacrifice. <laughs> and all their blood sacrifice. And all their blood sacrifice. And the blood of the singer in the band. There was more than one. Say it. And the blood of the singer in the band. There was more than one. All of them. Say all the blood of all the people in the band. Say it. They curse him. Well, I know that. So we lift the curse of all the people in the band. Say it. We lift the curse. Of all the people in the band. From all the people in the band. And all their blood offerings. And all their blood offerings. And all of their rituals. Huh. And all the rituals. Huh? Yeah, yeah. All the rituals that they did. So, uh, and all their rituals. He wasn't in the room, but he didn't have to be. No, he didn't have to be in the room. They were doing the rituals at the same time. So uh, we, I'll lift the curse of the rituals. Yeah, all right. Say I'll lift it. The curse of the rituals. Of blood. Of blood. Offered to Baphomet. Offered to Baphomet. Say it. Offered to, offered to Baphomet, but there were more Nordic. Oh. Say we lift the curse. Say it. We lift the curse. Of the blood offered. Of the blood offered. To Odin. To Odin. Weak. To Odin. <laughs> to Odin. To, to Thor. To Thor. And especially to Loki. Yeah. And to Loki. Mm. Say it. He came through the dog. Fenro the wolf. Fenro the wolf. Uh, so we lift the curse of Fenrir the wolf. Uh, Say it. <laughs> so we lift the curse of Fenrir the wolf. Is that his name? <laughs> That's his name. Uh, so we lift the curse of Fenrir the wolf. We lift the curse of Fenrir the wolf. And all the curses. Mm. All the curses. Even the Celts. And the Celts, yeah. It's on his leg. It's on his leg? Oh, yeah. See, we lift the curse. know what it means. See, we lift the curse of the Celts. Say it. We lift the curse of the Celts. He's holding on to it. Say it. I command you by Christ. We lift the curse of the Celts. It's to his grandpa. Say, we lift the curse of the Celts. He forgot to pronounce it today. Say, we lift, the, lift, say we lift the curse of the Celts. 
I, I don't need I it. don't need you to editorialize. You do what I tell you to do. Say we lift the curse of the Celts. Say it. Who's we? You murder and all your kind. Murder was speaking. Murder continues <coughs> to speak. Say we lift the curse of the Celts. Yeah, we lift it. We lift the curse of the Celts. And the Druids. And the Druids. And every tattoo. <sighs> They're not going to go away. See, we lift the curse of every tattoo. Say it. They're Say not it. going away. You're going to do what we tell you to do through Christ. I and the other members of this prayer family who are joining me all over the world. So we lift the curse of every tattoo. We lift the curse. Of every tattoo. Of every tattoo. I take a threefold cord from Ecclesiastes 4.12. Unto you murder, I bind Jezebel, Leviathan, Asmodeus, Fenrir, all the Nordic and the Celtic gods, Baphomet, and all the gods of dark music and <coughs> satanic metal in the band. Every curse, every ritual, I bind it. I bind it. Now get up and face me. Say, I murder. <sighs> Say, I murder. <sighs> Say, I murder. <sighs> Say, I murder. Come on. I already said it. Well, I didn't hear it. <laughs> Say it again. <sighs> I murder. And I forgot Jezebel a moment ago, too. We had her in there for sure. <laughs> Say, I murder. <laughs> I murder. Say I murder. <sighs> Say I murder. <sighs> Say I murder. I murder. Speak for all this kingdom of evil. <sighs> Say <sighs> I speak for all this kingdom of evil. <sighs> Say I speak for all this kingdom of evil. Say it. I command you by the blood of Christ. By he who conquered Satan in the wilderness, by he who rose again from the dead, by he who returns to judge the dead and the living, by he who casts you into eternal torment. See, I speak for all this kingdom. Say it. Say, I speak for all this kingdom. Speak for all this kingdom. We receive. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. We receive. I know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh uh He's been watching. You know. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Everybody's been telling him to stop. Say, we receive. Get your eyes open and look at me, murder. Say, we receive. Uh, nobody's on his side. Where are you? You know what? There are countless people on his side right now watching all over the world praying for this man. There are young people out there who've been messing around with death metal and dark music out there, and they're having an awakening right now as they see you. And lives are being changed, and people are coming to Christ. Look at me, murder. Look at me. Get your eyes open and look at me. I command you by Christ. Uh, See, we receive. You're not talking to murder. Well, who are you? Who jumped in to interfere? I was speaking to murder. Is someone higher than him now taking charge? All right, that's fine. He's already declared on the behalf of all of you. So whoever this is, we bind all those aforementioned to you. And you are who? Leviathan? <laughs> I know that look of Leviathan. Uh, yeah. First try, huh? <laughs> Say, I, Leviathan. Say it. This is the face he wore in the band. Really? 
You possessed him when he played. He didn't know. Oh, he didn't know. He wondered how he got so good so fast. You helped him, Leviathan. Yeah. Because you wanted his soul. Oh, yeah. Say, I, Leviathan. It was mine. It was my right. Say, I, Leviathan. Speak your name. Identify yourself as making the following declaration. Say, I, Leviathan. Say it. Come on, prayer family. This is spiritual warfare. This is what exorcism and deliverance is really all about. It's not what you've seen with some preachers. It's not what you've seen in the movies. This is the real deal. This is the kind of battle that really must be fought for people's souls. And the same battle I fight all day long every day in our virtual encounters is what we teach people in our school of exorcism. This is the kind of warfare we must learn to wage. You're watching it right now. Now pray for me. Pray for this man. Say, I, Leviathan. Mm, yeah. Say, I, Leviathan. I, Leviathan. Speak for all this kingdom. Well, you're the one that wanted to jump up and take charge here and speak. So say, I speak because for this kingdom. Because they're nothing. Say, I speak for all this kingdom. Say it. Get your head down, look at me. I and shouldn't have to speak for such pathetic scum. What, the rest of the spirits, you think they're pathetic? They had him in his flesh. I have the rest of the way. Well, by your own admission, you were the one who inspired him in the band, so you're the one who's going to have to own up to take charge now. Say, I speak for this kingdom. Say it, I Leviathan. Speak for this kingdom. We receive the judgment of Christ. With the sword of the Spirit, I cut you off from your pride. The pride you inherited from Lucifer. Say, so we receive the judgment of Christ. Say it. We receive the judgment of Christ. The pride was a gift. Leviathan, speak what the man of God tells you to say. What the people of God agree with me to enforce. Oh. Say, we receive the judgment of Christ. We receive the judgment of Christ. You ready for it now, Leviathan? You know what's coming. You rose up in your pride to speak for this kingdom. That's why he had to get rid of that picture of the ships. That, ah. was, that was you. Uh -huh. That was you in that <laughs> picture. I was involved, but yeah, yeah, I was there. <laughs> yeah, that was you. I was over his head every night. Over he it. wanted me since yeah. forever. The picture. He was begging for me. He was begging for me, Bob. <laughs> he doesn't want you now. He contacted uh, us for help. So what? This is it, Leviathan. Say, you speak on behalf of this whole kingdom. Say, <laughs> we all say it. By the sword of the yet? spirit, I strike you with the <laughs> sword of the spirit. Say, we all. <sighs> Say, we all. Say it. We all. Go. Get your eyes open and look at me, Leviathan. Say, go. Oh, interesting eyes, Leviathan. <laughs> Say, we go. Say, we go. <sighs> Pray, members only channel. There's Maybe no water there. I'm not going. going. Say we go. There's no water there. I'm not going. You're right. There's no water there. Fire. Say we go. Say we go. We go. Now. 
Remember, spirits, all of you that we have named, you are all now bound to Leviathan to suffer the fate he declares. Say now. Say now. Look at me, Leviathan. Say now. He said, we all go. Say now. Say uh, now. Are you sure you got them all, Bob? Yes. I bound them all with a threefold cord from Ecclesiastes <coughs> 12. They're bound. And I don't need your retorts to buy time. You said we all go. Say now. Now. Two. <laughs> two. Two. It's two. The. The. Say it, Leviathan. I know what you want me to say. Say it. <laughs> say it. Christ commands you. We command you. All who would agree in agreement in prayer with me now command you. Say pit. I feel a Say it, Leviathan. Pit. Say it clearly. Say it clearly with enthusiasm. <clears throat> Say pit. <coughs> Say it. Pit. Come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go, go, go. Johnny, push this evil out of you now. Come on. This is it, man. This is your chance to get free and receive God's destiny for your life and the purpose for which he created you. The purpose for which he brought you back from the dead as a baby. This is it. Push it out. Of it. Go, 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 Leviathan. Go, murder. Go, Jezebel. Go, Asmodeus. Go, Fenrir. Go, Loki. Go, Thor. Go, murder. All of you. Come out. Come out. Come out. Push it out of your head. <laughs> all the spirits of the band, all the spirits of death metal, all the spirits of the rituals of the ceremonies. Go, 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 come on, come on, prayer. Come on, members only, folks. Come on, let's agree. Push it out. Go, go, go by the power of Christ. Go by the power of Christ. Go, go. <laughs> I take this oil, the oil of the Spirit. I speak the peace of God, the presence of Christ, the comfort of the Holy Spirit to fill you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> it's okay you <coughs> cough it up puke it up get it out of your system sometimes it comes out in a physical as well as a metaphysical way <coughs> say Jesus Johnny Jesus say Jesus did this for me Ah, Jesus did this for me. <laughs> All praise and glory. He promised he would. Praise you, Jesus, for hearing my cry. <laughs> praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, man, I have something else for you. Ah. Okay? Something a little different. Ah. You mentioned something to me just before we went on the air. Do you remember what you said to me? <sighs> that you've never had happen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you've never been baptized. Not as an adult, no, no. So, a kid, yeah, but... so just so that all my friends watching know, I am, <sighs> a, I am a believer in Ooh. believer's baptism by immersion, which I believe is the biblical model is established in the apostolic age. But... There are some people who believe in sprinkling. So I right now cannot walk out there 
<laughs> through the internet into your room and take you out to the bathtub or swim pool or whatever. So look at me. <laughs> look at me. Oh. Okay, I've got this bottle of water here. <clears throat> All right. Got my Bible. All right, here you go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. Thank you, God. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Buried with him in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. Well, maybe not exactly buried, but sprinkled with him in baptism. <laughs> and that's that's good <laughs> enough for right now, okay? Amen to that. <laughs> what, what, um, what, what, do you I, have, what do you have to say? Well, um, I've been praying on this for a long time, you know, since I knew that it was coming. Uh, or since I knew, I've been praying on it like nonstop and it's been hell. It's been hell. Um, it's put my family through way more than it ever should have. Um, it's put me through just nonstop mental anguish, spiritual anguish, you know, doubting my salvation, all this stuff. And I thought about it and I prayed on it hard. And all I, my only prayer coming into this was it my testimony and you guys haven't heard any of it this stuff is serious it's you stay far from it if you're tempted to it if it even seems attractive to you then you have to stay away but my only prayer was that our lord jesus christ lead one person to salvation tonight or from future streams just one person and the last thing i said right before you came on right before you popped on it i found romans eight eighteen. And asking for his guidance it says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of god that shall be revealed in us and down because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god amen you know i i got i, Bless have, you, I have to say Thank after you. what we have just witnessed of this hideous <sighs> evil to see you now the real man of God, holding a Bible, speaking the word of God, that says it all, man. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Mm. And uh, Amen. We'll Thank be, you, Bob. We'll be talking with you. now. I want Thank to you, say, prayer family. Amen. I want to say a quick word <sighs> to uh, those of you out there who have been watching us on TikTok. Uh, you want to see this whole thing? Then please go to the Bob Larson Exorcism channel, and we're gonna be posting this whole thing in a few moments and tell everybody you know to be watching it. This was amazing, especially if you know some young people out there who are into dark music of some kind, especially death metal. Get them to watch this. I encourage all of you youth pastors who may be watching me, Get your young people to watch this. Let them see what this stuff is really all about. And thanks to every one of you who were part of this prayer family and help us to reach this incredible moment of victory for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be sure to be watching on Friday because on Friday, a special edition of Ask the Exorcist. Maybe you got some questions on TikTok or on YouTube about what you saw tonight. We'll answer some of those questions on Friday. That's nine o'clock Pacific, 12 Eastern. And don't forget next Monday, my live vlog at 10 Pacific, one Eastern. Dallas will be seeing you next week, right back here. Will you see what's happening next week? Remember, whoever you are, Jesus loves you. He cares about you. You witnessed this tonight. If you're bound by these powers of darkness, contact me for a virtual encounter just as quick as you can. Let me minister to you like I did to him right now or get on a plane and come see me in Phoenix because you, just like Johnny, can get free, stay free, and live free. Your financial support and prayers make it possible for us to bring hope for the hurting and freedom to those in spiritual bondage. For the latest information regarding ministry outreaches, go to boblarson.org or call 303-980-1511.